As I speak, it's rather cold outside. The temperature is only two degrees. Despite that, I'm gonna to go to Hatchland's trout farm and have a go to see if I can catch a perch using ultralight fly tackle. Let's see how I get on. When you start fishing for perch, uh, or any other coarse fish for that matter, one of the first things that I do is pop out a little bit of ground bait. In this case, I throw in a few maggots. Every time I cast, I throw in three or four maggots, and then I put the fly in on top of it, and just let it sink along with the maggots. If you can get your maggot fly so that it has more or less neutral buoyancy, that's even better. first fish of the day was a lively little rud. It took the maggot fly as the maggot fly dropped through the water column at the more or less the same time as the maggots that I'd thrown in for ground bait. This quite often happens with rud, you can get a bite within seconds of it hitting the top of the water. One of the favourite flies that I like to tie for perch fishing is a simple maggot fly. You can make it out of all sorts of materials. I've made some out of wool which I wrapped around a hook. I've made some out of the disposable masks, the elastic on the side of disposable masks. A lot of those are around at the moment. I've made some out of funky foam. And funky foam um, is a material which you can buy from most craft shops and it's ever so easy to use. Uh, you can tie a maggot fly very quickly and uh, very simply, but they do very well. Perch seem to like them, especially if you do them in a mixture of red and yellow and white, and you keep changing the fly. They wise up to the flies pretty quickly, but uh, keep changing them and you've got a good chance. To make the maggot fly, I start by impaling a small piece of punky foam material that you can get from most craft shops, very cheap. One sheet will do you a lot of flies. And I put it on a size 10 grub hook. And the size of the funky foam, probably about four centimeters long by about three millimeters wide. You can make fatter maggots by increasing the uh, width of the funky foam. Once I've done that, I start whipping on towards the bottom of the shank. As soon as I can, I move down the shank and then I start to move back up again. Nice tightly touching coils when I get about so far. What I'm also going to do is just take off that little bit of extra thread and then I can continue to wind until I reach the top. Once I do reach the top, I'm going to start to go back down again. I want to make the first segment of the maggot, so I squeeze the punky foam shut and then I wrap around about five times. Now I need the funky foam out of the way 
because I've got to go down again and then I can make my second segment once again get the funky foam out the way you don't want the thread showing where it shouldn't be showing I can make my next segment down again make another segment down again and now for the last part I'm just going to catch those bits there they're a bit long so I'm just going to trim that off <laughs> got to be careful doing this a number of times when I have accidentally uh, cut my thread and left it hanging so to speak is uh, quite a few times and now all I'm going to do I'm just going to whip around that bottom tiny piece of foam there and I'm going to tie off so <coughs> about five turns pull free do the same again pull free snip it now I'm going to use a little bit of black thread Pull up and make sure I catch that piece. Can trim that off now. Just do a few more turns. Now this is just to make like black. <laughs> call it really the black tail of the maggot it's really just the end of the body wrap around that a few times flick that free and trim next thing I'm going to do on the top segment either side of the hook eye I'm going to put in a couple of black dots and those represent the breathing holes of the maggot. I'm going to seal the black thread with UV resin. I like to use Deer Creek, it's a lot better than the others, it doesn't go all tacky or stay tacky. It goes nice and hard and uh, that's the fly done. Sometimes, as the fly drops down through the water, it's intercepted by species such as rud or roach. Rud tend to be right at the surface, roach tend to be a little bit deeper. Even though they're small fish, on one weight rods, the rods are so light that they give a game little struggle. It can be good fun, but uh, today I'm after something a little bit bigger. The next fish that came along was a bit of a surprise. It was a little crucian carp. I've never caught one at Hatchens before, but after talking to Peter, the manager, he told me that they put in some about 10 years ago. They don't often come out, but this one was too small, I think, to be one of those fish. 
and I think they bred successfully in the water, and this was one of their offspring. usually tell with a carp though when they take it the line just sings out it does seem a bit strange having an emu in the distance there's an enclosure over there best to keep well away from it but uh, he's got a few emus in it Whoop. And see what I mean about it ripping out and uh, that will be a carp so we'll just start to get that under control we've got to get him away from the weeds oh let's get him back out we can see him a lot of that weed is near the top so we can ah. uh, ram me out and into the weed oh no this Actually, the fish is still there. <laughs> yes, he ran me out in the weed, but he's still there. Let's see if we can get him back. You can see the fun on these one-way rods. You've got to be so careful. But it's good fun. He's not the perch I was after, but I'm not complaining. Uh, off he goes again considering it's January and a cold day it's fighting pretty hard Starting to turn. And it looks like a common this time. This one. I had one a little while ago. And that one was a mirror. This looks more like a common. Yeah, it's common. To papa. That's a good boy. <laughs> nice little common. Uh, probably about three and a half, four pound. I always like to use a carp cradle, even when I'm fishing for perch. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, probably a good four pound. Nice little fish, good condition. Nice common. Let's get him back in. As a famous duo would say. As we put him in, and we'll go with and away. <laughs> I've been mortarized. <laughs> oh dear. Things were a little quiet for a while, but a few fish came up, a couple of rudd, a roach, two of the smallest bream I've ever seen. 
and a, a little Grushin carp. I don't know how long he'd been in the water, but not long. I think it was fairly immature. I had a couple of carp, one of which gave up a nice bite, and then just sat down for a while. As I did, I noticed the line starting to snake away through the water. Let's revisit that fight from a different angle. Have a look at what happens to the line. There's something about perch, their beautiful colours, the way that they just bristle, that I find really appealing. I love catching them. They may not fight as hard as a carp, you can see that looking back at the fight I had with the carp in the video, but they are just a magical fish. And for me, whenever I get a decent one, it's a red leather day. Whenever I fish for perch, I like to take a small carp cradle with me. They're quite a soft-bodied fish, and the carp cradle gives them some protection. It also comes in very useful for other things. For example, for carrying my bank sticks, and because my one weight fly rods fit into little cases, they both fit inside the carp cradle as well. Makes carrying everything a lot easier. Just a short video this time, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. It's much appreciated.